So it's about 4 a.m. here in Phoenix, Arizona. We were supposed to leave on a hunt for uh, feral pigs yesterday up in the northern area. Huge snowstorm moved in. All the roads up north were closed. We're going to attempt it again this morning. Vehicles equipped to stay out there for a couple of days. Got survival rations packed just in case. We're probably going to be hunting in temperatures that are going to be a negative 15, somewhere in that region. So we've packed all our winter gear and we hope that we're going to obtain a really nice feral pig, make excellent eating, grab a cup of coffee and hit the road. See how the, the weekend turns out. So currently our GPS is giving us a couple of route options to get up north. Due to the, the heavy snowfall we've had, we are going to go with the fastest route. But currently there is a lot of snow on the roads. Currently at a gas station, yeah, this area has been plowed, but um, we're definitely going to give it our best shot to get up there. My little hunting buddy. So... Uh, Actually, if we get stuck in the snow, I'm just going to make a meal out of him. Talk about catch and cook. I better fill up my coffee. Yeah, you better. Anyway, we're going to keep on moving. The sun's starting to come up. Beautiful winter wonderland here in northern Arizona. Looks like the roads are going to be clear. Everything so far looking great. Great scenery. And um, should be at the ranch in about two hours at this stage. Here are my friend's ranch, looking for free-ranging pigs, uh, approximately five below. It stopped snowing and um, we've been out for a while now looking for these pigs. But your average person would think uh, I'm off my mind. Should be rolled up under the covers and uh, watching Netflix. But instead I'm out here hunting. And why? I don't expect other people to go get my food for me. In modern society today, we've become so removed from what we put in our mouths, what we put in our stomachs. We don't even read the labels and the majority of people think that meat comes in a cellophane wrapper and you walk into a supermarket and buy it. They don't ever give it a second thought of what's transpired in order to get it to the supermarket. You need to go to an abattoir or slaughterhouse and see what animals go through in modern day processing. For us, we're a different bit of a different breed and we go out there and we try to provide for our families in a more natural way and it's a lifestyle. What we do is much cleaner, the meat we're eating is better, the animals, there is very little suffering. It's over very quickly. That's why we do this. That's why I'm out here. I plan to catch it, clean it, and cook it. Got him? Yeah. That's a pork chop right there, an organic pork chop. <laughs> Pig spotted down in the river bed, and I am going to shoot him with my custom 357 SIG if we get close enough. So the pig is moving. So I just uh, shot this beautiful pig, it's about a hundred pound pig, um, free ranging on my friend's ranch up here in northern Arizona. Decided to make it a little bit interesting, spotted this pig from about three, four hundred feet away and uh, instead of using my rifle, decided to use my custom Glock that is in 357 SIG. After about five minutes of stalking, 
was able to make a really good shot on this pig. Can't wait to get this pig processed and put some really good organic meat in the freezer. So, here's the pig that I just shot. Uh, good organic meat, he's pretty lean. And uh, we're gonna clean him up, and the next time you see him, he's gonna be in the kitchen. Daddy did bring home the bacon, and these are pork tenderloins, which we're gonna put on the grill tonight. And basically, pretty simple recipe, a little bit of uh, pink salt. Just get them really salted up pretty good. And then we're gonna turn them over, give them a bit more. And this one and then I've got a little bit of roasted garlic herb here which we're also going to put into the mix just really rub it into the meat so it really gets coated pretty well and then of course we've got to have good old black pepper just to finish off and we're going to let the meat sit for a little while now. So I just got the fire going. I'm using briquettes or charcoal. I'm going to be doing it in a weaver, which will help with smoking the meat, bringing out all the, the flavor and the juices. Well, the fire's really looking good. Those briquettes um, nearly uh, burnt through. Looking rather forward to dinner. So the pork tenderloin has now been marinating for just over two and a half hours. And the grill is also looking really good charcoal is spread out and we have even heat so we are going to start cooking the pork tenderloin should take about 30 minutes to uh, be ready for eating a little bit of a balancing act right there get... oh great sound no better sound than that and uh, shortly we will close it up so um, just to keep it nice and moist I'm gonna add a little bit of honey mustard which will uh, give it an additional little bit of flavor and uh, help the tenderloin from not drying out on the grill a good dollop there another one over there give it a little bit of basting and that should do it for now just opened up the Weber grill, just putting the final touches now to the pork loin. We're just going to brush it once over with the honey mustard, which will add to the flavor. Give it just another minute under the hood. This meal is going to be ready to be served. Within a space of uh, two days, animal was harvested and uh, now is on the grill and uh, going to be feeding the family for a couple of weeks, around about 100 pounds of fresh organic pork in the freezer. Pork loin just came off the grill. And there's our completed uh, organic pork loin. Been a fantastic weekend out in the wilderness and uh, gonna go and enjoy this delicious meal with my family. <laughs>